Hello, welcome to the next episode of Beyond the Playbook. Uh, we are joined by Vince Marrow, tight ends coach and recruiting coordinator for the Kentucky Wildcats. It was nice to catch him uh, during his off time back home. Uh, we talk a little bit about the SEC, the outlook on the conference, um, you know, what the, what the Wildcats are looking like this upcoming season, what the keys to the season are, uh, we talk a little bit about the current landscape of college football with him and how it's affecting his team more specifically. It was a great interview with him. You know, we tell some fun stories, uh, some fun, you know, some some fun discussions based on, you know, the upcoming season, you know, with the most competitive conference in college football. And we are just really excited to show you guys our interview with Coach Mero. So here it is. All right. So. So it's a pleasure to have you, Coach. Uh, it's been a while since since we've seen you. The last time I saw saw you, you you, you came off a recent Citrus Bowl title win, um, tight ends coach and recruiting coordinator at the University of Kentucky. Um, had the pleasure of you know seeing you guys progress as a program, mm -hmm. and largely uh, you know that has to do with a lot of you know your your hard work on the recruiting trail and uh you know but before we go into that i think what we want to talk about first is you know you grew up on the south side of youngstown you know went to school with this guy right. what was it like playing uh <laughs> playing with with coach in in high school you know man it was it was it was a unique situation because my father had just passed and when i was coming out of middle school you know, Ursuline, a lot of schools were trying to get me to go to the high school. And I said, you know, I want to go where my older brothers went. And then my dad passed, like, my middle of my freshman year after our basketball season. And he always wanted me to go to Mooney. And I didn't know nothing about Mooney. I just remember Mooney would play in South on, on Saturday night games. And I'm like, man, it just looked beautiful. Like, these buses would pull up. It'd be about 15 buses and see the cheerleaders and the band and all that stuff. So... I knew a little bit about it, and then also, you know, with Mark, uh, my brother played for his uncle, so I kind of, like, knew Mark. We used to see each other. Like, I didn't know him, and then we would play, like, football. Like, he would come to practice with his uncle, Uncle Bob. But when I came to Mooney, it was like, first guy I I met that, that kind of made me feel, you know, I mean, I felt I was a tough guy, but I was, like, coming into a new environment, and... Your dad, Coach Polini, at the time he was, you know, you knew about him. Everybody was telling me that he had this great basketball player and this guy was going to be the quarterback. And I, and I was like, you know, I didn't know him, but he made me, coming into the building, you know, he made me feel relaxed and comfortable. Didn't really know about his basketball game yet. It was more talking about football. But Coach Nard had told me, like, hey, you know, Bo's a good basketball player. And then I think – uh, Tim Parker was like, man, you got to see, uh, you know, Bo, he called, everybody called him Bo. And I think we had, I don't know, Bo, did we have open gym or something like that? Yeah. And, uh, that was the first place I met you, I think, yes, was at an open, open gym. gym. Yes, it was trying to get me to bond with the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. And was it at Fitch? Yeah. Yes, because you know what, Bo, I just left Fitch, and I was I was telling the dude, he, he was talking about me and you. Uh, he said, yeah, I remember we used to go at you and Bo. I was like, the guy was actually in Mark's class. He's a teacher there now. Okay. And I said, I told the new coach for a call, I said, yeah, me and Boyce put a lot of points up in this gym. And mm -hmm. I said, I, but I remember my first induction to Bo was at Fitch. And like I said, you're playing AAU, I mean, uh, summer league pickup, open gym. And I was like, man, this guy can play. And South was still trying to get me to stay there. So I go play like open gym with them little different days and then it just I was like man this 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 Mooney team could be a pretty good team I just wanted a different change after my father had passed gotcha yeah because Timmy Parker was at Mooney by yes. then right yes and he remember he was Tim was trying to recruit me but I think uh Nard knew when I came to the open gym and I seen your talent and, and I was like you know Bo was like the first dude who could score but he'd get you the ball and I was like Man, this guy got a pretty good IQ for basketball, and of course, you know, he. I like to shoot a lot, so he was getting the ball a lot. So, <laughs> so I like that was cool, you know. That was cool, but no, it was that's my first introduction to yeah coming to Mooney. Yeah, so 
so you guys obviously played football and basketball together. How did that, you know, do you think that that kind of connection that you made, you know, you mentioned Coach Stoops as well, mm -hmm. you know, playing with, with Bo at, at Mooney and, and football and basketball, you know, how do you think that that, you know, helped you, you know, kind of progress through, you know, your, your career, not only as a, as a player, but, you know, down the road in your career as a coach? Yeah, I, I, you know, people like, even when I do like interview stuff, like, it's, you know, Mark was a little older. I was a sophomore. He was, he was, he was a senior. And we, because I was good enough to play varsity, you know, I hung out with them guys. But it was more with your dad, Bo, where that whole transition of me coming from South and then coming to a, a more diverse school. And, and I always tell people this. I was, me and, me and Buff were just talking yesterday when he was up in Cleveland recruiting. Uh, I said, man, going to Mooney really helped shape me of who I am. Now it's a 52 year old man because uh, going through college, playing in the pros, I just, Moody prepared me to deal with all types of sit situations and, you know, a lot of what I love different about types Mooney. Of people, yeah. Different types of backgrounds. Yes. And that's what I loved about Mooney. I, and I said, you could be sitting next to a rich kid, you could be sitting next to somebody, dad worked in the mills, but it was just, you, you really never seen color. And even when my girlfriend came back with me for the Hall of Fame, she said, that, I see who you are now, because I think she was like, you know, down in Lexington, a lot of, I just mix, mixed with a lot of people. And she's, when she came back for the Hall of Fame, she seen both, she was like, okay, now I get it. Like, she was trying to explain to her friends and her family, like, their school is kind of like, it ain't a cult, but it's kind of like a cult. Like, they just all, from all walks of life, the different uh, years that people graduated, they just all, like, they know each right. other. Right, yeah, it becomes, it, get, yes. it gets to be, yes. you know, like, uh, you know, there was obvious whenever you guys started at, at Nebraska mm -hmm. uh, to coaching together. You know, you guys, whenever you came in as a as a an assistant, yes, uh, that's you a know, good you point. Guys you guys brought said. in, you know, a bunch of Mooney players. <laughs> you know, you guys had, you know, Mooney coaches. What was it like having so many, you know, Youngstown, you know, people on the staff and and on the team? It was, you know, working for Bo. I I, I, I don't know if I ever told him this, like. Where I'm at today, I actually credit him because, you know, I was coaching pro ball in NFL Europe, and then I was coaching at University of Toledo, and then we got fired. And then I was – they didn't want me to leave the area, so they offered me this job at this high school. And I had two good players, and uh, I remember Bowie's been saying, and this is what I love about your dad. Of course he was recruiting the two players, but he was like, man, I got to get you, you got to come and work with me. He said, we need to work together. And he said, even if I don't, I don't know if you remember that, but it was Kevin Williams and oh, Leroy. Yeah. And it was like, even if he didn't get them kids, we were still, and I, 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 give, him, I give him all the credit for giving me the opportunity to come back to college because I don't even know if I would have came back to college. And just working with him and working for him and just seeing how he dealt with staff and dealt with just – all different kids from walks of life. I mean, sometimes, you know, when you got a friend you work for and you're good friends with them, sometimes, you know, you move out to the side and you watch him as a person. And, and he, to me, I say this, and I'm not saying this because he's sitting here, I think he's one of the top 10 football coaches that, to me, still should be in college because the type of person he is, he won, but he's even a better person. And I think you talk to anybody who worked for him, they say, hey, we I, it, I actually we talked I talked to guys and we still talk about that and they say man working for Bo was really really uh, really good because he treated guys really well and their families. I think it was awesome that that we got to get so close with you guys whenever you you know we were in Lincoln together. Yeah. You know Yana got to mm -hmm. play softball with Kate. Yes. yes. And, you know I know you got you got some good stories to to tell about <laughs> that as well. Oh, yeah. so, mem 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 stories. Remember the uh, remember the uh, well we go you know. Vince and I, Patrick, go back a long way. I mean, all the way back to, I mean, you you talk about that, not only the uh, uh, the open gyms, but going down and playing on the on the old <laughs> South Side and um, playing down in the in the hood. <laughs> yes, I, I tell people this, like, you know, when you recruit for coaches, and and, and I even say this like for Mark, but when I was recruiting for Bo. It was easy me as an African American man to go recruit kids in the inner city and say, "This is the guy you're going to play for." I mean, some coaches, they, I don't think they had the experience that Bo had. And I, I remember this is a true story. I took your 
we had went down to the south to play, uh, went down to the falls to play on the south side, really rough area. And I think I was a sophomore user. I think I was a sophomore user junior. And we, like, guys didn't really, they knew we were young, but they had a lot of guys who you call like street ball players that are legends down there. Mm. And nobody would pick us. So my brother Brian, who played at Wisconsin, he, he, he kind of bullied and said, yeah, I got game next. And he picked me and Bo, and I think him, and then I forgot who else he picked. But Bo, I remember this day. There was I just left a guy, Marlon and uh, Magahi, and then there was another guy named Gerald Morgan who was really a good basketball player. They were like guards. And your dad, they were running the court, and we get on, and we beat them. And I think we beat them like, when they were, you go to 11, we beat them like 11 to like 8 or 11 to 9. But remember the last point? <laughs> I don't know if I can say this on here. Uh, Bo steals the ball from Gerald, and we go on two on one, and he throws it up like behind his back, and I catch it and dunk it. And they had these chain rims, so I'm hanging on it. Now your dad is the only white dude at this park, and he says, "Get the burp, burp off the court," <laughs> and I get quiet because I know there's some killers there too, dudes and all, <laughs> and and uh. Right, the south there. side of Youngstown, yeah. you know. It's, yeah. And then one of the dudes to get quiet. And some dude, I'll never forget, some older dude from the hood, he say, man, that's a badass white boy. <laughs> and from there on, this why, you know, was, was, was you, were you born when your granddad was living? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yo, 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 Mr. Bellini, the next day I called the house because Bo would pick me up in the car. And he said, dude, he's gone already. I was like, what? And I was, I'm getting nervous. They say he, he didn't come. He went straight to the playground the next day. And I was like nervous. And remember, I get down there and I think dudes picked you down there running. He was like, What are you play- doing? <laughs> what the hell are you doing, man? Right. <laughs> he, said, he said they already got the pass, though. But I'm sure grandma wouldn't, wouldn't have, wouldn't have liked <laughs> to know that you were down no. running down in the. Uh, we played side. all through there. We played all there in Cleveland. There, and mm-hmm. after a while, I mean, I still, I still know all those guys to this day. Man, I run into them all yes. the time. Your dad, when I say, and it should never been like that, but your dad got a pass. He can go anywhere. Dudes. And I think that's why to this day when he was a college coach, all them guys are parents now or they knew the kids that he was recruiting. That's how we ended up getting like Marcus, uh, Courtney Love, the dudes out of Akron because people, and I'm, I'm just saying it's like, you know, Mooney goes back to Mooney. We never really seen it like that. It was just, you are who you are. I'm going to judge you by who you are as a person, not your color. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, you know, that's, that's another great thing that I, you know, really appreciate, you know, about Youngstown Mooney is, you know, we had so many different guys from so many different backgrounds come into play Mm -hmm. at the same spot, but like all had the same common goal. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wanted to compete, compete for state championships. Mm -hmm. And and I I think it was just great that, you know, we were able to, you know, continue that, that, that pipeline going throughout, you know, the, the, through college athletics and yes. and now that you know you guys have you know grown up and you know moved on in your careers you know having you guys at at uh at Kentucky now you know you got you coach Stoops coach you know Buffano coach other you Stoops got, yeah yeah right and, and, and Mike's there now yeah, yeah coach Mike. Mike so and they just had you know Eric Wolf you know, coach Wolf was just right. there from Courtney Arsenal. Love yeah, Courtney, Courtney loves her. Courtney. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's pretty special. I mean, you just look throughout Youngstown. It's just you know, yes, Youngstown. There's just a thing about it. You yes. know, I mean, you say Youngstown in the college coaching community, and people know what you're talking about. Obviously, we talked earlier about you know Pat Narduzzi, yes. and Tim Beck, and yes, you just go right down the line. Down the line, man. And I remember the one year when you was head coach at Nebraska, Bob was at Oklahoma, Mike was at Arizona, and you just look and you say, and then a lot of assistants were either coordinators or position coaches. If you come from the cradle of Youngstown, and I think the reason why, you know, guys from Youngstown are so good recruiters or they're good head coaches, because like you say, it's the foundation of what our parents were or the culture was. You had steel mill, blue collar. Uh, it's just a unique place. And I'm going to be honest. I know Bo, when he left Nebraska, I used to always say, Remember, we always say, I wish we could take Mooney and put the school where we're at. 
whether you was in Lincoln, Nebraska, whether you were in Lexington, Kentucky, you really wanted, I wanted my kids to experience, and you got, you got a chance to do it, experience growing up in that Mooney culture, because it is different. It's different. Uh, There's no doubt. You, you also mentioned Coach Beck, Coach Tim Beck, who's, yeah. who's now at NC State, right? Yes. Yeah. What, what was it like coaching with, with Coach Beck? I, I told, I said to Mark several times, we, we should hire Beck as our coordinator. Or, and, and don't get me wrong, uh, I think Mark was very interested in, in hiring him. Uh, he, is, he has a mind. I'm telling you, Beck has a great offensive mind. Uh, that RPO stuff that people all got now, Beck was way ahead on that. He yeah. really was. He was way ahead on it. Uh, but Beck's another guy. He, I think when Bo had Beck as our coordinator and then you had Carl as the defensive coordinator, these were guys that you can – they almost had the same beliefs that you had, so you felt pretty good. Like, okay, this guy's running my offense, this guy's running my defense, and they're they the voice of both. Uh, Beck, I'm going to tell you, Beck is a really good coach. And we played them in the uh, the Tax Slayer Bowl in 20. Well, actually, I, I was the coordinator in that game, and Beck was the coordinator. We it was it was very nice, man. We took a picture with me, Mark, Beck, Bo. Uh, I mean, not Bo. Uh, Courtney Love, uh, Buff. It just it was like a Youngstown, a little mini Youngstown Cardinal Mooney reunion. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and you know, I think. You know, I think it's just become just part of the, you know, the, the college football world at this point. You know, yeah. everybody knows that if somebody comes out of Youngstown, you know, they're going to have some, you know, they're going to have a lot of, you know, ability to, to coach or to play. Yes. And they're going to have the right background and be about the right thing. That's right. Know? I mean, you got to understand right what work. hard work is and, and all that. I mean, heck, you know, you got, we were talking about it, wasn't Patrick, the other day of, uh, you know, Sean Baker, he's with the Texans now. He was with me at, you know, he's a Canfield kid. And Donald Delicio just got the safety's Chiefs. job with the Chiefs. And um, he, he just, they, they, they understand what work, you know, you got to work in this profession. Yes. And you got, and, and yes. they understand, you come from, from Youngstown and the surrounding areas, you, you understand what hard work is because that's the kind of families you grow up yes. with, you know. But let's go a little deeper, Bo, with us. I mean, playing a Cardinal Mooney, the hours you would put in, I ain't never seen. I still ain't never experienced nothing like that in my life. Like, no, we we would, we would get out of school at two thirty, maybe three. I never forget the first time when I first went to Mooney and I got home like at ten thirty at night, and my mother was like, "What are y'all doing all them hours there?" And I said, "We practicing." So then the next day it was the same. She was like. I'm taking you out of that school. And I remember my brother Brian was like, no, nah, it's, it's really good for him. And I'm telling you, that work ethic. Your mom and, didn't play either. She, uh, no, she, she, didn't play. she, she like, would have taken you out of that school. <laughs> she would have, dude. But them hours that you would put in, gave me a, it gave you a real work ethic. And I think anybody who went to Mooney, whether you're going to be a now father, you work at a job. I mean, because let's be honest, everybody didn't play pro ball. Everybody didn't play Division One football or Division Two, But they all went on to be husbands. They all went on to be providers. And I really do believe, when I see a lot of my classmates who, when I come back, they're all doing productive stuff. And I think, I, I know for a fact, for me, and even talking to a lot of them guys, it's being spent in that building up there on Airy Street that it molded you. It did. Think about it. I mean, did you, did we ever walk off the practice field before 8.30, 9 o'clock at night? No, I mean. Never. <laughs> never, dude. I mean. I mean, you could you imagine that today? There's no way. Are? Do you you remember this though? Remember we playing Fitch. This is your senior year because we had a pretty good team. We playing I think either Fitch or Bordner, and we practiced at YSU. You remember this? Yeah, and, it, and the clock hit like eleven forty five. We looked, and I said to you, I think I might say to you, what color? I said because well, it was Culver. Culver yeah. said, if it hits eleven thirty, I quit. Yeah, I quit. <laughs> and I remember like I was like, shut up, you ain't quit. We in the middle. I looked and I said. Is it me or do that clock say ten fifty six? This is like on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, dude. And we they remember they turned the lights off. Yeah, finally they turned the lights off. So it hit eleven o'clock. Well, we started it at seven thirty. So yes. it turned eleven o'clock, and then finally it it then that's when Culver said if it turns eleven thirty, I quit. Yes. So it hit eleven thirty. Then eleven forty five, they turned the lights out. 
Okay. So we all start. So we all start jogging down to the yeah. end zone, thinking we're you know we're gonna do our forties and get out of here. And we start moving. People start moving down, and he was like, mm. Mm. He wouldn't have let that. So we practiced in the dark for about five minutes, five and minutes. then he sent us down there, and we ran our sprints. Oh my god! I got home that night, and my mom said, "But can you imagine, parents? I think he's finally yeah. lost his mind. Yeah. <laughs> I think he. I, where where have you been? I was like, I was at practice." <laughs> But can you imagine that? No, no. no. Can you? Like be, they'd be turned into the, like children, boy. Like, I don't know what the hell you call that. <laughs> but they'd be turned in, boy. I mean, we had long practices, but nowhere near that. Not like that. No. So did you play? You played for PJ. PJ. Yeah, I played for Fetch. Coach Fecko. Yeah. Coach Fecko. Coach Chris. Coach Chris. Yeah. You know they real? can't do that anymore. I no, mean, you can't no. do that. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Chris would have liked to have us out there for <laughs> for that long. But well, PJ played for. Uh, yeah, you know, for Butchie, yeah. so he, you know, he knows he knew what long practices were, but PJ's you can't do I that. Now. I think PJ is the one. You know, that's a that's like a, 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 a folk. You probably heard the story where Bowie was in practice and we were hungry. That's one of our long practices, and it was Halloween, and I was hungry. We put I, I thought it, was, it wasn't PJ. We put it. It was, it was Buffano on those yes, guys and put them over the fence, and they yeah. already had all the equipment. And they went chicken treating for us. And they came back, and that's how long our practice. They came back, and they had candy in the yeah. in the <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh man, oh, it's, man. It's, it's it's a it's just amazing sitting here just reminiscing about that. I'll yeah, tell you no. this, man. Me and Buff was talking. I would love to do something. We we got to do something for Butchie. Oh yeah, you know, we talk more off on it. Special I'll, man, yes. special uh, special. Uh, I mean, heck, I mean he. I think there's a reason, you know, between him and you know, Coach Stu, you know, Coach Stoops Senior, you know, and he, uh, who was our defensive coordinator, and I mean, heck, Tony Congemi, you go right down the list, other great coaches there. Man, but, um, the continuity that stayed for that yeah, long, for a long time, they were ahead of their time, man. Yeah, yeah. Coach Butchie was at Mooney, you know, th- through my high school career, and as an athletic director, as yeah. an athletic director, even. So I always wondered, like, what time. he would think, like. He see you both, son, and he, you in the building. Like, did he ever say anything to you? Like, he, stories? I mean, or? he accidentally called me Bo like multiple times. <laughs> he, he's, I mean, he's the best. Um, he was very supportive throughout yes. my career. And yes, I feel like that's how everybody was around there. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, you know, they would get on you. You know, Coach Chris. You know, <laughs> he would get on me. That's for sure. But you know, he's one of the best. He made me. You. Oh yeah, he made. I mean, made me. You know, better player. Got me mm-hmm. where. I, you know, to where I was um, mm-hmm. in Notre Dame. So, yeah. so you know, Patrick, was, when 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 uh, when he was coaching with when when Yana was playing with Kate softball when we were at Nebraska, tell tell Patrick. Remember remember when it, at the one game when the, when the uh, well, it was two stories. That's a funny because remember the one <laughs> that you tell people we had a game and it started. I think it was gonna start like at maybe twelve. Uh-huh. And I'm in my drive. He said he said, you know, bro, where are you at? I said we still have somebody to leave out the driveway right now. I swear. I said they're. I said they're warming up. He goes, they're warming up. I mean, Patrick. They were from his house where he lived in Lincoln, and where that that field was was a good fifty minutes. He pulled in like twenty five minutes, thirty minutes later. Dude, I, I said, oh, my God. I said, you oh, weren't so leaving you were... your driveway. He goes, I swear to God, I was. I was, was in my driveway. I was moving. How fast did you drive? Oh, dude. That day you Monique broke, you broke a land speed I, record. I, I, think it was, I had to be like 100 <laughs> all the way down, cows and everything. But here's another true story. Uh, so we had a pretty good – they had a pretty good travel team. And we – you know, it's hard, your dad being who he is. And we plan probably about 50 minutes, maybe an hour outside of Lincoln. And uh, it's a game. Was it a game going? Was it our game? Yeah, it was your game. Yeah, but it was a game going on before that, and they kind of made some bad calls. Yeah. And we didn't say nothing, but we was like, man, these rocks, it's going to be different. So we playing, and I want to say, was Kate catching or was Kate she? Kate was catching. Yes. Completely got the girl out. Somebody was sliding into, and she ran him. Or remember, yes. she ran like at that age. You know, they were young it's kids. So if a girl ran into your, ran into the catcher, like you had to slide. Yes. If you don't slide, you're out. Yes. So it was like the last <coughs> inning. This girl comes running down the line. Kate catches the ball. Is it you know? And she turns to tag the girl out, and the girl runs her over. Ball rolls back to the 
to the to the uh, backstop. The girl comes around third, wins the game. Yes. So I'm, you know, we're all sitting there waiting for the umpire to call her out. He says, game, walks off. <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting there yes. in the stands, oh, and I man. hadn't said a word. <laughs> well, he comes walking by, and I said, you got a slide. Yes. And he kind of looks, and I said, I thought if you didn't slide, you were out. You were back there. And he's kept walking, and well, this guy is sitting, this, this umpire is sitting there who wasn't involved in the game. He was just sitting there, and, and I, I kind of fall, start walking out, and he goes, "Why don't you keep your mouth shut?" And, and he a, goes, "In in your in your and he and I said, excuse me." He goes, "And your football team sucks too." So that's what we know it's personal now. And I was like, turned around, and I was like, "Oh, it's on now." Oh, and I was like, <laughs> "So, so tell him what happened." So he says, "Because now it's I think it's two ups." He's the other guy, but the guy said it to your dad, and he says, "Your dad says, well, won't you come over here <laughs> behind these trees, buddy, and we can talk about this." And so the other dude says something. He's a big dude. He's like, he's like talking smack to your your, your dad. So I just like whisper in his ear. I say, "I don't know if I can say that on here," but it was. Burp, burp. Oh yeah. Lock your ass out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he goes. I hear him behind me go. You know, listen. He's a head coach, and all these people yeah. are watching. And he said, "They don't know who I am." Yeah, so I'm saying. the one you got to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that's the type of stuff you dealt with, man. Like your dad. You know, we go to these games, and you know, you're still a parent. You know, mm. and <laughs> just there was just a, that, that was. I was just talking to somebody. Oh, it's being Frank talking. We was at a restaurant last night. We just reminiscing about Mooney stuff and, and just saying how good. He was talking about the comparison like Bob, Mike, and, and Bo. I said, I think it's just the way we all came from. Like, Bo would want you to go to your kids' events. Like, that, that, that was the first coach I was around that, like, he'd be like, hey, your daughter got a game this Sunday when we watch a film? Bo. Man, go to the game, just come back and watch a film, you know. And I work with other coaches. I ain't never seen that. And I would have other buddies that work with other coaches, like, when you in there, you in there. And Mark is the same way. And I heard Bob was that way. So oh, I yeah. think it's just the way, like, again, the way we were raised. Family first. Yes. No doubt. Yes. yes. And we're going to take a quick break to thank one of our sponsors. GBS specializes in providing maximum practice efficiency by integrating and automating all phases of clinical financial, and administrative operations. With their wide range of healthcare solutions from revenue cycle and practice management to patient engagement and remote patient monitoring and identification, they can serve over 30,000 healthcare professionals nationwide. You know, I think that's the other thing I want to ask you about, Coach, was, you know, you're obviously like the lead recruiter at, at UK now and you've had some tremendous success recruiting in this area. Uh -huh. You know, you got Lynn Bowden, you know, out of, you know, Warren, Youngstown area, mm -hmm. um, you know, a few other guys in the Cleveland area, mm -hmm. uh, to my understanding. Do you think that's, you know, being from this area and kind of understanding, like, you know, what your, you know, what the values are of this area? Like, has that helped you, no you know, doubt. in recruiting yeah. specifically? A hundred and ten percent. Like I was saying earlier, when I worked for your dad, I was recruited for him. It was easy to recruit to a program that you believed in the head guy. And the head guy, I mean, like I said, there's some coaches who recruit for coaches and they don't really know the coach. They don't know the head coach. You mm -hmm. just recruit. I think when I used to go in and, and when I was in Nebraska recruit for a bow, same thing with Mark is that I fundamentally know who they are. And the parents know that when I'm selling them, I'm selling them as – I know this guy, and this is what his beliefs are. And you believe it or not, when you live in this area and you come back, people also want to help you. You know, it's like, you know, when Bo was at Nebraska, yeah, we got Marcus and all them dudes, but it was more like the whole village wanted them guys to go where we were at. It was always at one time, you only can go to three schools when you was from Youngstown. Nebraska, Oklahoma, and at the time it was Arizona. 
but it really was always in Nebraska or Oklahoma. Right. Because they knew, them parents knew that we would take care of their kids. No and doubt. They, and that they were going to graduate. Right. So that's why to this day, it's easy to recruit for Kentucky because Mark being who he is and people believe, like I lived all parts of Ohio, and they know at the end of the day that we're going to look out for their kids. How much you guys, you, what would you say the percentage of kids in your recruiting class are from Ohio? Mm. So here's Kentucky, you don't get it. I mean, you probably take, what, three or three four a year? Kentucky's starting to get better. The yeah, football's starting I know, to get better. Yeah. But here's, just look at this. So 13, when we got there, they already had relations with all the other coaches from Florida, so we had signed a lot of Florida kids. We may only sign, I think we signed three Ohio kids, Cal Meadows, uh, Marcus McWilson and a corner out of LaSalle. That next year, out of 23 scholarships and 14, we signed 13 kids from Ohio. The next year, we signed 15, we signed 8. 16, we signed 14. When I tell people this, Bo, we start winning, start going to bowl games in 2016 and been going ever since. From 18, we have won five straight now. Ohio played a significant big part in that. Ohio football changed Kentucky image of who they were and how tough people see us now. Our, our, the people in Lexington, Kentucky, and the state of Kentucky, they look at Ohio kids as like Kentucky kids. Like, they really embrace the Ohio kids. Oh, well, I mean, see. heck, it's right there. You yes. Know? I mean, Cincinnati's what? Less, about an hour 50 away. Minutes. Yeah. 50, 60 minutes. Columbus is two and a half hours. Cleveland is five. Youngstown is five and a half, six. You can be in all them places driving. When you drive, you can get there about yeah. half that time. See, that's why I say <laughs> guys is different. So people say Columbus from there is three from Lexington, but it's two and a half from me. <laughs> Cleveland is five, but it's four and a half from me. Yep. But yep. no, it, it is really, and you got to look at the guys that's in the NFL now. We got a lot of kids from Ohio that's in the NFL right now. Absolutely. Lynn Bowden, one of them. I want to hear a little Benny bit about Snell. that recruiting story. Uh, uh, Benny Snell was an Ohio kid? From Columbus. Well, I didn't know okay. that. Yep. Okay. Yep, from Columbus. Uh, man, Lynn, it goes back to how people trust you. You know, Lynn Bowden didn't take, he didn't take one visit. Lynn Bowden had 30-some offers, Bo. He didn't take one visit. The, the, the guys, you know, the guys, and the, the people like from Falls, playground, all the type of people was like, you going to Kentucky. He didn't take one visit. True story, Urban Meyer and them came in two weeks before signing day to try to flip him. He didn't even show up to school that day because the people told him Youngstown South is down in Lexington. And them people, I really, let him tell people, when he won the Paul Horning Award, he tells people, me going to Kentucky saved my life. Saved his life. Like, Lynn Bolton is one of the best football players I recruited. Oh, oh yeah. He, Patrick, I mean, that was Patrick played against him. They, they wow. were yeah. in the same class. So my senior year, you know, one of his last games at, at Harding, I think this might might have had no, a little bit to do. Them, didn't you? Oh we yeah, did, we'd be oh yeah. So one of his last talking. games, yeah, one of they, Lynn's last high school games, we went out to Harding. Everybody in the papers picked us against Harding. And we go out and uh we go out and we beat, you know, mighty Lynn Bowden. and Lynn, you know, Lynn in Youngstown, like you got I mean Everybody looked up to Lynn. Yeah. Like the Did y'all beat him? Y'all beat him, right? We beat him at home. Yes. And so do you think that's p part of the reason why he became so successful was because, you know, we were able to go into their house, beat him senior year, and you think that that's why he became as successful as he was into in the Kentucky because he lost to the mighty Cardinal Mooney Cardinals. Yeah, Mooney, <laughs> Mooney, Mooney does that to you though, man. The Mooney will do that to you. Like we we a different breed. And I, I actually gave him crap over that. I said, dude, when he came on his official visit. Because he was like, talking about, uh, he knew like, when he heard all this, we all go to Mooney. And uh -huh. I was like, man, every time you hear them names, that kind of make you feel a little bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he told oh, me, yeah. he said, man, I was so, he said, that was a hard game. I was so exhausted that game. And I said, Bo told me he was at the game. Because remember, you, you texted me from, I was a Maryland recruit. Yeah. And you said that he was a really good player. And I said, did they win? He was like, no, Mooney beat him. I was like. That was a hell of a game. It I was mean, probably, I mean. Place Lynn, was Lynn was. And, wow. I mean, Lynn had. I think Lynn had four touchdowns. You know, we we just. I don't even think we scored a point in the second half. You know, but I remember. You know, we ended up blocking the extra point for them to tie it up and send it to overtime.
but I remember Lynn threw a touchdown pass that last drive, you know, threw a dig route down the middle, perfect pass down the middle for a touchdown. He can throw, and, Oh, yeah, he could throw. And, and you know, I but but after that play, he just he went to a knee because he was so exhausted. Yes, he's. A- but he was. But he literally could. He could go up against eleven guys and, like, I mean, one of the best plays I've like ever seen in, like, football, was whenever he played against Ursuline. Yeah. Is as a whenever he was still at Liberty he was before he transferred to Harding. Yes. Yeah, when he was a freshman, and he goes he, the I don't know if you've even I don't know if you've seen that clip, but he was the he yards. was the punter and. You know, they had a the the snapper kind of screwed up the snap. He you know snaps it back. Lynn like kind of drops it, and you know the the guy from Ur- the, the edge rusher from Ursuline runs up and you know is you know gonna tackle him. So Lynn's like, all right, I can't punt it. I gotta run, and he just starts doing his thing, like exactly. dancing around. You know, probably dodges like eight or nine tackles yeah. at least. Yes, and takes it like ninety eight to yards, the house. <laughs> yes. 98, 98 yards to the house against. Ursuline, which which I really like to see because you know they were our rivals, yeah. but that was our you know arguably the best football play I've ever seen. Let me tell you, uh, uh, two stories. Your dad, we playing, uh, we in Studentville Big Red. Mm-hmm. And it's a physical. That's the most physical game I ever played in high school. Yeah. I mean, I was like, beat I up. say the same thing. We were, and I remember your dad. We going. What is it about a seventy some yard drive? And At the end of the game? Yes. Yeah. And that's the first time I see Bo get in Butchie's face and say, give me, like, he was a quarterback. We ran belly option for, like, I don't know, maybe four or five plays all the way down the field to win the game. And there's two high school games I've seen like that where I said, man, your dad really, people understand that this is the go-to-the-state championship game. To me, that really was the state championship because we ended up getting upset next week. We played Gallion. We played them 20 times. We beat them 20, 19 times. They beat us that one time. I go see Lynn Bolton play, Bo. They play a Massler. I get to the game. They're down 21-6, 28-6 at halftime. He sees me comes. They go into halftime. Score at the end of the game, 41-36. He scores five or six touchdowns in the second half. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. Like No doubt. The dude I mean, from Coach Ramash was like, that's the greatest high school player we ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it was, I think he got robbed out of the Mr. Ohio. Oh, because it's bright. You know, it's, they don't ever, they don't ever get that to anybody from this no, area. You no, know, it's always somewhere in Columbus or some political. Dayton. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think I that's. I always wonder if, you know, he reminded me of, when we were talking about it, that from the high school standpoint, he played quarterback. He reminded me of when Braxton Miller was Ohio State. Yes. Because remember when Braxton Miller, and we, I don't know, were you still there when we played him in the shoe and we could yeah, we not We played him in the shoe. Remember, we were up. Yeah. We were up like 14. And he just made like cape. <laughs> nine guys miss and went yes. 80 yards. And I was like, and then when I watched, you know, what that's, what, that's what Lynn Bowden was like. Yes. Bro, he played. So we we were we had our quarterback we lost our quarterback second game. We go to South Carolina. I tell Mark, I'm telling Eddie, I said, man, Lynn played quarterback in high school. Put him at quarterback. So we don't put him at have this other dude. We end up losing to South Carolina. The last drive, the kid get hurt the quarterback. They put Lynn at quarterback. You guys wolf this. We on our own 18. Lynn comes in three plays. Throws a pass. Drop back. Throws another pass. It's about 70 yards ago now. Drop back, scrambles, shh, touchdown. Touchdown. He yep. scored within like 18 seconds. When Wolf came and Wolf was like, shh, we was like, damn, they want to put that kid at quarterback. So he goes, he goes to quarterback the next game. We got eight regular season games left. He rushes for 1,400 yards in the SEC. That's what he ended up winning the Paul Warning Board. I think he would have won. The Heisman, they would have put him at quarterback to start the year. Start the year off, because he would have played two thousand yards, man. He could be. You can argue that because we I we mean, won ten was, games that year. Yeah, and he won the Paul Horning Award, which is like the Heisman for all the athletic guys in yeah. college football. Hmm. I mean, he dude, he is a. Where's he, he at? Is Miami Dolphins? He went to the. He's yeah, at the Dolphins. He got traded so. to the Dolphins. Yeah, he just different, man. But that's another. 
we always talk about being from Youngstown, just another Youngstown. Absolutely. Guy, Absolutely. You know. But uh, want to hear? So give me a little bit of give me a little bit of outlook on on this season. What's re, what's the recruiting class looking like at this point? So last year, our recruiting class, we had the top ten recruiting class. We 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 really hit it out the park last year. This year, uh, we have four, five guys committed. Recruiting has changed now, boys. You know, we got a lot of official visits now coming up in June. Uh, we we probably gonna have a top fifteen class. Uh, mm -hmm. We got some really really good good kids in Ohio. Like we probably gonna sign. I bet seven guys from Ohio this year, and they all. I mean, you look at the star right now. These all, kids that are gonna sign this year, like in this class, or are these guys that are two years out. No, this class would be twenty three. So they okay. signed in December. Yeah, yeah. Okay. they signed in December. Uh, so you know, it's it's. It, we I think we have a pretty good recruiting class, and then our team coming back. I mean, your dad was just been talking. Uh, we I think we we lost maybe four guys off the team that went ten and three. Uh, quarterback is, I mean, just came out just the other day. Some people say he could be the first guy took in the draft, but I I think at worst if he. Plays the way he's gonna play that he did last year. He they project him to be a top ten pick. Yeah, Will Levis. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best in the country. Yes, no he, doubt. he is. And I'm gonna tell you the bow. He kind of got traits like you, how you was in high school. He's a leader. He's tough as hell. He don't. I know I mean, one thing. He took some shots in that Iowa game and then and got just right stood back in up. the pocket. Yeah. But if you see this dude, he like two thirty five. He oh, he's like, a big dude. I've seen him. We gotta get Will on the podcast too. Oh, he's well, a, oh yeah, he's he's yeah. So he's he's what? He's gonna be a fifth year senior this year. He'll be a fifth year senior. Yes, sir. He really had. He really gotcha. has another year left, because he had COVID. The COVID year they gave him. He really is a red. He's a red shirt junior. Actually, could have came out this year. Just looking at the quarterbacks yeah. in the draft this past year. Uh, he so we got him. We got an all SEC running back that's coming back. Who's one of the top rushers in the country? Uh, we got two tight ends that'll be drafted next year. Uh, two guys out of Ohio, Keaton Upshaw is about six seven, and Bates is from Moeller. He's about six five, two sixty. Good, good players. Uh, three of our old linemen back from last year, and we uh, got the number two tackle in the country. This kid, Keanu Goodwin, the six eight kid. He about six eight, three forty, left tackle. Uh, so we gonna have a good. Our defense is back when he lost. Three guys on defense, and we got we got this transfer in from Ohio State, uh, Darren Henry. What's he play? He's a DN, pretty good player. Uh, What's it going to be like trying to replace a dynamic player like Wandley yeah. Robinson? <laughs> you know, he was like, fun to watch. Dude, he, Holy cow, Bo! He was special. Pound for pound, he is the toughest player I ever yeah. been around. I just had to do an interview with him with the New York Who, Times. Who's drafted guy him? Too, right? Kentucky Giants. guy. The Giants drafted yeah. him. Yeah, I recruited him since he was a ninth grader. Man, he was. Little dude, but just so dynamic. He was really dynamic. And, you know, when Nebraska, you know, and I, I know we got it, but I wasn't going to let that kid stay in Nebraska. When he was going to that portal, I knew we was going to get him back here. You know, Nebraska fed him on all this stuff, and they had him playing tailback at 170 pounds. He was getting killed. And his parents, dad, they didn't. They Did he like, start at Nebraska? Yeah. Okay. For he what, was, one year? He started two years. Oh. So he was there for two years, got to come back. Uh, they just have the transfer portal went all the way that you could play immediately, but he had a waiver because his mom was sick and he, it was, he was only like 15 minutes from campus. But he played, started to tell, he was a dude, Nebraska did not want to lose that kid. Like, and you know what I got to see on the yeah, side? He's though, special, man. It's Mike yeah. and all of them. I got to see them a lot. Uh, he's dating a the girl. They really seriously, seriously, you know, uh, yeah, the he's oh Mike Barrett, Mike yeah. Barrett. They yeah. they were there at this draft party. He was the our whole he family. Was, that was they were good was family the, friends the softball of ours coach. When we yeah. lived in Nebraska. Oh, good people. Yeah, because no, they they all play softball together. Yeah, they he yeah because she, she plays softball with mm -hmm. with Kate and and Yana. I think he was the coach. Why not the coach? Yeah, he was head. Coach. Yeah, he was the coach. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. they were there, uh, and they came. His his son is not a bad football player. No, I. His mm -hmm. son's not a bad football. His son was a good football player. I'm surprised. He's a senior now. Yeah. So I think at one time he was talking about walking on at Kentucky. But he's but a good baseball base. player too, so oh, they, you know, so who knows what he's gonna do. But yeah, he's he's one day we got this kid transferred in from uh, Virginia Tech, Tavion Robinson. It's kind of like him, but the dude that surprises
local kid. I recruited out of uh, Douglas. He's a four-star receiver, about six three. Bo, he came on. He uh, he might be our best receiver. He is. What's really his good. name? Dane Key. His brother was. was did he play last chief. year? No, this this is first year in the road okay. early. Went through spring ball, so he he would be a good player for us. And his older brother plays for the Chiefs. He's a safety, so comes from a good genetics. Dad played at Kentucky, so it, it's they picking us to win. And, you know, usually you like being a underdog, but they picking us for Georgia to win the East. So it's going to be interesting. Will we play Georgia sure. again this year? Yeah, they come to us. Uh, they come to us week nine. Okay, that's when they come down to it. Yeah, we'll have to make. Who it down do you there. play in the crossover this year? Mississippi State. In Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Okay, so that's so you only play two crossovers this year. We play one crossover. Mississippi State is always we always play them. Oh, and then okay. our one crossover game is Ole Miss. Oh, so you, so I so you only play two teams from the other league now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You always so you play Mississippi State every year. Yeah. And then our crossover one is Ole Miss, and I think next year it'll be LSU because it rotates with them. Either LSU or and M from the West. So that's so you, so how often do you play? Like uh, how often do you play Alabama? Every four years. Every four years, but no. just once. Once. Or do you play home and home? No, we we whatever. So we played there. In nineteen, during we played there in nineteen or eighteen, and no, we played there in nineteen. So they had come here. In, oh, okay, in yeah. twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think of the NIL stuff? Has that affected you guys recruiting in the SEC? No, no, it's because maybe this is a little different, Bo. Like, I think kids from up north is a little different. Like, and I don't know, but it's like it's more kids from like the south. You see, like the NIL stuff, and now do kids up north want it? But I just think, you know, now, and I, I just with a what's his name, Tim, head coach for Holman, he was just telling us. That they about to get NIL in high school here. Is that true? They're talking they're about it. Vote, he, th- he's I saying it's going to pass. Yeah, I wouldn't be sur- I think it's already passed in a few states, but. And somebody that's running it is a dude to play for you. The dude who is called, he gets 10% of any NIL deal because he, the company started like, you got to go through him. And it, it's a kid who played linebacker when I was there. He was number 40, but he had to stop playing because of concussions. Oh, uh, Blake Lawrence. I think that's him. Yeah, so he's doing he the – Blake Lawrence is doing the open doors. Yes, the, that's him. The open doors company in Nebraska. He is. Yeah, he doing really good. Yeah, open doors, you know, they're – So they're, they're what does really he well have to do with the NIL? Because he started – open doors is either contracted with NILs. Like any NIL deal that's done, they get 10% of their company. Nationally, oh wow! Yeah. If they, I think that's on a is that on a client like a per client basis or per is that, basis. yeah yeah they they already have you know well I don't know if it's per client I think it's they did something with they they set up something through nil nil that their company is contracted with that like this dude make a lot of he make a lot of money yeah he's a great he's a Blake was a kid. He was a uh, and Audie said, Canolic, right? Yeah, when I first was. got there, he was. I think he graduated from Nebraska in about two and a half years. Wow! And uh, you know, then played a little bit as a grad student and stuff. And boy, I mean, but he's yeah, he's killed. It. He's done a nice trade. But what you say, Bo, on that? Uh, what I think, because I want to be careful. Like, you know, I think kids should be rewarded for their play. I'm more worried about the transfer portal. I think because they both go hand in hand. I have no problem with kids being rewarded for their play. It's the kids who haven't earned it yet. Yes. I don't like, think I you, think once you earn it, okay. That's oh, fine. I get what you're saying. I think that's what's going I think that's the issue where you're going to have in a locker room. If you guaranteeing a high school athlete, you know, like you see somewhere, $7 million, $8 million. You gonna have guys on your team that's like, we already didn't been to war. We already did this and did that. I, I I can see that being a problem. I really can. But as for nil, you you you'll think it ain't as big as problem as you think it is though. Like, and our because I think if you if you make plays and you do well, there's a lot of businesses in town that's gonna wanna you know 
Yeah, the associate with yeah, your name. Want, whether it's 50000 or 100000 You just uh, got to be able to market it. Yes. It sounds, sounds like you guys have been. And it's like the NFL. When I play in the NFL, some dudes got endorsements, some dudes didn't. You got you to gotta, you gotta make plays. You got to do things. But like I was telling your dad, the transfer portal, I'm for kids if they want to transfer. But my thing is this. It's ruining, I believe it's going to ruin high school recruiting and the kids having a chance to get scholarships. You know, when when your dad was head coach, you we, we usually would sign 20 to 25 kids. And I'm saying these are going to be ju- maybe two JUCOs or three JUCOs, but you sign high school kids. Now you got, you would normally would take 20 to 25 high school kids. Now you may, you got some schools will only take like 13. 14, and they try to go in the portal and get like eight or nine guys. And I just think it's, it's, it's ruining the culture of how you build a team. It's almost like you have to go step by step as a recruiter. Like you start at a smaller school, and then if you have success at that level, you got to, you know, keep going up. Yes. And that's just not how college football no. is. No. And picture this, Bo. You know, it's not how it started. So, Youngstown State got a, 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 a kick ass quarterback. He's really good. What you got to watch now. Power five schools are coming get that dude. No doubt. Tomorrow. For sure. And they offer him, you know, NIL deals and all that. I just I just think, you know, they need to figure that out. And then there's a lot of kids in the pool. And what and what the what people don't understand, the average fan don't understand is for every so kids that would normally have opportunities to go to the Kentucky, Ohio State, yes. wherever, you know, like power five schools. Those are there aren't as many spots now. No. So now these kids that are, who are expecting to get recruited aren't getting recruited. So then they basically got to go to a, a smaller school and hope that they get yes. recognized there. But picture this, bro. So like you said, you can't go to a power five. So now them type of kids are going to Mac. But then you have some kids that are like Mac kids coming out of high school who's now can't even go to like Toledo or Kent State or Bowling Green because they saying, okay, I'd rather take portal guys or some talented power five guys have now dropped down yeah. to them. So it's just I, I, my, my stance is that I think they should have scholarships over here, your high school scholarships, and then give each school a certain seven, amount. Yeah, for free okay. agency. It's like free agency. Right. You know how the NFL do you draft? Do you think there's a good way to regulate it now? I do. I just I, I really believe. Pat, like, Let's face it, the, the the NCAA, who, I mean, we all know that, I mean, I could say it, there yeah. are some total jackasses that are making some of those decisions, but they didn't think it all through. They made these roles and, yeah. Like the Wild West like now. Yeah, like, so the NIL, should kids get paid? Yeah, possibly. The kids who earn it, and but... They didn't really regulate it the right way. They just kind of said, okay, now you can just we'll pay kids. They didn't really talk about how and how it's going to affect and, and how to do it. And it's the same thing with the transfer portal. They got tired of dealing with all the uh, all the waivers. And so they just said, okay, now anybody can transfer. Well, and the problem is, is everybody associated with the, the business now know there's, knows there's problems with it. In both those areas, but how do you now that you've let the cat out of the bag? How do you how do you regulate it now? I don't think you're going back. I mean, how can you? You know, because it's like unless free. unless the NCAA let's say is say okay, you're out. That's yeah. where it's heading. You can say that. <laughs> no, I mean, no. I, I just think it's it's not far off. No, bro, it's Ohio State's AD just talked about it. Just said, you know, let let the whatever they call it, the CFP, the college football playoff, let them do football, keep the NCAA out of it. And I think that's where it's heading. Uh, Thank you. Let me just say this. I heard a rumor years ago that college power five football, basketball, they all that would be like one commissioner. And it's like, like the NBA, NFL. I mean, I don't know. I, like I said, that's out of my pay range. I, I don't sit on them boards, but I can tell you this. Some has to be done. You got kids going in the portal, and they don't even have a home. No. There's kids sitting in the portal. I think it was like hundreds of, I mean, couple hundreds of sitting in the portal 
transfer and I don't have a home. I know, I'm not going nowhere unless I got a home because, you know, these schools still going to pay for my scholarship. If You, you got to do your homework. But how do you stop I just it? think it's a shame because I think for the all for the for the long term of college football, I don't think it's good. No. I don't it's, think it's good for the kids that are playing either. No. That hey, if you don't if I don't get instant gratification, I'm leaving. Yeah, that's I mean what, that's what's happening. That isn't the way the world works, no. man. You gotta no. earn your way. But that's I mean, could you imagine a kid walking into my office and saying, I'm going <laughs> into the portal? I'd say, Take your ass out of here. Yes. I you mean know, I mean just and you both, you the type of person. I want the best room. for them. Yes, but I'm saying because but you I sat in that living room, you sat in that living room with their parents. I know you. You would be like, "That's right, get your," and you'll call them parents and be like, "You know, Johnny said he coming here." He said, and them parents be like, "I agree with you, coach." But kids now can just walk in and say, "Why well, you didn't throw me eight balls this last game? I'm done." And they see another kid catching ten balls at this other program. And they, they look, I'm saying they see stuff like that, and they be like, oh, I'm, I'm going in the portal, I'm going there. It's got to be tough for coaches. You know, they, they're they basing their coaching decisions based on recruits' feel or, you know, the players' feelings or, like, how many yeah. I mean, you got to recruit your kid. I mean, it's hard enough being involved in recruiting. I mean, yes. somebody, I mean, you heck, you're a recruiting coordinator. You're known as one of the best in the country at it. But you got to recruit your own kids now. It's for four years, yes. for the whole time that they're there. Yes. I mean, yes, yes, Bo. That's the and I, that's why I was about to. Hit, I heard Pat say that. I get more credit. Like our culture has been pretty good. The dudes, yeah, do not want to leave. I, 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 don't get me wrong. We have people going to portal. But I think they went to portal because they weren't playing. But we're not losing great players like you see in other places. Like guys are leaving, and they've been stars on the other teams, and they just leave. I think. Our culture has been good enough that we've been able to maintain that, but I, I, I agree with both. I do think there's. It's just going to get harder coming. and harder. Yes, it's going to get harder and harder. You got to. But I bet if you ask Mark, I mean, I mean, and I mean, you you deal with it. I bet, I bet he deals with that all the time. I mean, he's oh, he man. has to recruit kids. <laughs> he got to recruit his own kids. That's what I'm saying. You got to, and you know, I mean, which I think he's going to take care of his players anyway. Yes, but you know, you got to. I mean, you have to always take that into account now, and that's that's just time taken away from other things, other things. that you could be doing, and, and I don't know. It's The whole thing has just gotten crazy. And I will say this, but it, we both know, like, there's no way, and I can say this, this is not your dad saying this. Your dad should still be in college football. He's one of the winningest coaches when I watch what we won with and the type of kids we won with, beating other programs who have four or five star kids, he graduated his his, his uh, players. The great thing Mark got, Mark has our support from our president to our AD. Yeah, you got to, the to board baby church. the best, one of the best ADs yes, in the country. But I don't Mitch, know the president, but but Dr. Capilouto is really they understand and they really good with. The support, and the only reason I'm bringing it up, this is just me, is if you had the support, you know, I have people say this to this day, like they know me, and you good friends, and other coaches that I met on a, on a, on the circuit that work with us now. I'm like, man, I never understood that they fired a dude, and his worst record was nine and four. He would go ten and three, nine and four, ten and three, ten and three, and I tell people, Bo Pelini is one of the best college football coaches I ever worked with. And it really is a, a travesty because he was good for kids. He, he really cared about the kids. And I think Mark is very blessed and lucky to have support from all the way Yeah, because you know, I mean, because we'd had no support. No, no. And, and, and bro, for Once you Coach Osborne, well, even when Coach Osborne was there, that the, the, the the chancellor gave us no support. And then when Coach Osborne was gone and they brought Sean Eichhorst in, we had the we had the chancellor and the AD, everybody who was trying to get us to fail. And put a whole system in place to try to get us to fail. For for what reason? I have no idea. And so here's why I say that's very to me what makes them good. You I mean, you you grew up in Lincoln. You know the recruiting areas there. You you really couldn't I mean 
football was okay, but it wasn't that strong there. And it's starting to get better now. Yes. What, but whenever I was there, it wasn't yes. the best. And so with all those stipulations and to still win nine and ten games and was beating teams that I really thought we probably, talent-wise, we probably couldn't beat. Got it done. Got it done. That's why I say, and, and if people, because I still talk to some of the people in Nebraska, like recruiting-wise, and they say, every from everyone I talk to, we they really made a big mistake. Really made a big mistake. Did you ever, th- did you ever think that he'd be putting a podcast production together? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. He, hey, uh, but, but I think the most thing I always tell people this. Bo is a very smart dude. Like always been a smart dude. I think when you look at coaching, you don't realize, but he's a very smart dude. So on one side, hell no, I still can't see him putting a pair. I, <laughs> I couldn't see that. I can see you putting one together. You know, yeah. but no, it's 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 awesome. I mean, sitting there, I mean, you, you figure we go way back, man, to night shoot. I get to have my say without the media being able to uh Yes. Without the media being able to you twist my words or twist the uh Twist their storyline. Now I can I can say what's on my mind and not worry, have to worry about it. You can be like Charles <laughs> Barkley now. Yeah, they, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been awesome catching up, Coach. I, I appreciate mm-hmm. you coming by today. It's been you know great visiting, and uh, I hope you know hope you. Uh, I wish you well on the recruiting trail here in the Northeast Ohio area. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that. You know, Kentucky's going to land a few more guys here in the here in the near future from this area. So go Cats, baby! Yeah, go cats. We'll, and hopefully we'll make it out to it. Hopefully, we'll, yeah. me and me and him will make it out to a game this season soon. So man, let me say this to you, man. It's, it's been really a privilege watching you grow up. Uh, you know, from when I was Thank in you, Lincoln, coach. you was young, and you know, seeing you, the man you are now, you you really got a bright future. And I appreciate I, I, I it, say coach. That. Come from good stock. Your grandparents are good people. Your dad is a, your mom are good people. So. I look forward to see what you're going to be in the next couple of years, too. You're the man, Coach. We appreciate you so much. Uh, we'll have to have you on, you know, sometime soon. Thanks, dude. My man. You're the man. My man. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode with Coach Vince Merrill from the Kentucky Wildcats. We wish him and the whole Youngstown crew on their staff the best of luck this season. Uh, we think they can make a huge splash in the SEC this year with some extremely dynamic talent on both sides of the ball. So we're really excited for them. Uh, next episode we're super pumped for this will be our season finale so make sure to stay tuned on socials for the drop for next episode Uh, and please tune into that if you like what you heard uh, please take 10 seconds out of your day to subscribe save rate five stars all of that it goes a long way for us so appreciate the support and make sure to tune next wednesday Uh, but also we're we're also dropping another sunday dinner episode sunday as well so two new two new episodes coming in the next week Uh, Super pumped. Thanks, everybody, for listening.